you asked about uh, number 13 and 16, I believe it was. And uh, both of those are what we would call these complex fractions or these mixed mixed fractions. Uh, and it is, it looks very complex here. There's a lot going on. Uh, we've got fractions inside of fractions and, and all this stuff. So uh, to start with, I'm going to ignore the denominator here for a minute. And we have what would be called a mixed fraction or a mixed number. Think about it kind of as an aside here. If you had three and two, I don't know, fifths like that, that's a mixed number and uh, or a mixed fraction. If we wanted to change that into an improper fraction, so this is a mixed number right here, uh, the fast and kind of quick way, quick and dirty way to do it is to do five times three, take the denominator times the whole number and add the numerator. So that would give us 17 fifths. And when we do that, we leave the denominator alone and we just change the numerator. 17 divided by five is 3.4, which is the same as three and two fifths. So that's how you do that. We do the same thing here. We're gonna take the denominator times the whole number. And then instead of adding the numerator, like I did here, this is a subtraction. So I'm going to do uh, the denominator times the whole number. I'm going to do 3x plus y minus that. Okay. So x minus y times, really, this we could, we could even change this to plus negative 3 if that made you happier. Uh, x minus y times negative 3. That's going to give me, uh, let's see, negative 3x. Let's see, minus y times negative 3. That's plus. 3y, because a negative times a negative is a positive. Uh, and since I changed it to plus, I don't have to worry about which one goes first or anything. So I'm just going to put plus 3x plus y. So really, I'm taking the denominator times the whole number plus the, num uh, the numerator. That's what we did here. Denominator times the whole number plus the numerator. And I'm going to leave the denominator alone. So I've changed this into an improper fraction kind of like changing this to an improper fraction. And I'm going to leave it for a minute. I'm not going to do anything with that yet. Let's do the same thing with the de uh, denominator here. Again, um, I could change this to plus negative, but I actually think that would be more complicated for this one. So let me just leave it alone. I'm going to do the denominator times the whole number minus the numerator. So we've got x plus y times 1, which is really just x plus y because anything times one is itself, minus x minus three y. So minus x, when you subtract a negative, that's like adding. And we leave the denominator alone. There we go. Same process, it's more complicated than this, certainly, but we do the denominator times the whole number, plus or minus the numerator. Uh, again, you could change this to plus negative, and you would end up with the same thing I have here. Okay, so we've done that. We have changed both of these complex fractions into what looks like an almost uglier fraction, but here it is. We can simplify a little bit. Negative 3x plus 3x, those go to 0. You can combine those together. 3y plus y, 4y. Uh, x minus x, that's 0. y plus 3y, well, I guess that's 4y again. And it was almost a really easy answer at that point. If this was a plus y, we'd have same thing over itself, and this would be 1. The answer is not 1, however, because they're not exactly the same. So now we need to do some division. We've got 4y, my, uh, 4y over x minus y as a fraction divided by 4y over x plus y. Now that's a weird way of looking at it, or that's an uncomfortable way of looking at it, maybe is the, I, what I should say. So let's write it a little different. I'm going to write it as 4y over x minus y. So I'm going to keep this fraction as it is. And I'm just going to write divided by. So instead of having this big giant fraction bar here, a fraction is just division. It's a dot, fraction, a dot, a dot over a dot. That's 
I'm going to fraction as division. So I'm just going to rewrite this as a division problem. I haven't actually done any math at this point. From here to here, all I've done is rewritten it in a way that's maybe a little more comfortable. This is more uncomfortable. This is a little more familiar. When you're dividing with fractions, you take the second fraction and you flip it over. You take what's called the reciprocal. We leave the first fraction alone. No? And now I'm going to multiply. All right. Big problem, but we're getting closer. Uh, multiplying fractions. I'm going to do something called uh, cross-simplifying first. You could multiply numerator times the numerator, denominator times the denominator, and you could do that, and that would be fine. Uh, I'm going to do some simplifying first. So before I multiply, I'm going to try and reduce. There's nothing I can do here to reduce because this has this subtraction and this doesn't. There's nothing I can do here to reduce. This has this adding and this doesn't. There's not much I can do with that. However, if I look diagonally, x minus y, x plus what? No, shoot, x and minus and plus are different. There's not much I can do with that either. 4y and 4y, yeah, there's no adding or subtracting, so I can deal with that. 4 divided by 4 is 1. y divided by y is 1. So I can cross-simplify. I can, I can cancel away from the numerator and the denominator uh, and make this a slightly smaller problem. And in fact, I'm done. Really one times x plus y is x plus y. x minus y times one is x minus y. Because that's a plus and that's a minus, we're really kind of stuck with this one and there's nothing else I can do. And that's the answer. These are big problems. Uh, because you need to change it to a complex number first, then you need to simplify, uh, then you need to divide with fractions, and then you need to simplify, and you, it's a big problem. But those are, that's how you do 13 and 16.